I, I can't say specifically. Uh, uh, it is only standardization that makes uh, Malaysia as a successful uh, Islamic banking hub. But this is happens in Bahrain, this happens in uh, all other jurisdictions as well. Uh, particularly, it has to do with the commitment, the political will by both the government and the regulators that put the right infrastructure in place to ensure that the services are provided the way it should be provided to make a difference between a conventional banking and Islamic banking. Another important thing is not only the 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 the, the, uh, the political will, but also the infrastructure. Uh, Malaysia, uh, Malaysia, particularly, uh, I can say, has the like every other uh, jurisdictions that has a significant Islamic banking in, uh, sector has all the right infrastructure that are required to operate an Islamic banking services. Uh, so I think now currently uh, we have about quite a number of jurisdictions that Islamic banking has achieved a systemic significance with a market share of over 15, 12%. So in that case, it's, so it's not only in Malaysia actually, but majority of the jurisdictions are putting the right infrastructure in place, they have the commitment, but above all, what is more important in achieving the growth in the market is more on the uh, effective regulation. Uh, the regulation, we at the IFSB, we issue standards, and I think Malaysia is one of those uh, jurisdictions that effectively implement most of the IFSB uh, standards. So as a result of that, most jurisdictions that has the, uh, the IFSB standard implemented, which are basically more prudential in nature, have achieved quite a significant level in terms of advancement, in terms of uh, Islamic banking services, as well as the growth in total uh, assets. This, this uh, problem has to do with quite a number of reasons. All right? One, uh, there may be jurisdictions that are very much interested in having Islamic banking based on the demand uh, from the society, but they have some legal impediments which requires that there is a need for a change of regulatory framework, the legal framework, the tax laws to accommodate Islamic the peculiarities of Islamic banking system. But I think above all is, uh, has to do with, the, uh, with the, the private sector. Once there is a demand uh, from the uh, public, then it is left for the private sector to take the initiative in developing the right uh, institutions because some jurisdictions requires banking, some other jurisdictions requires Islamic microfinance. Islamic banking is more general now, it encompasses all sectors that is required. So some achieve certain level of significance uh, because they have the ability to do that. The ability has to do with the, uh, the all overcoming all legal impediments, having the right uh, regulatory framework and having the right institutions in operating but other jurisdictions whereby they have challenges in terms of uh, establishing the Islamic banking. So although you may have a significant percent of Muslims or demand for Islamic finance, but still they have some challenges in, 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 in establishing Islamic banking. And then it is uh, important for whoever is uh, listening to this to know that Islamic finance or Islamic banking in particular is not meant for Muslim only. It's not supposed to be only for Muslim dominated kind of uh, environment or jurisdiction because it is based on the value proposition of Islamic finance. We argue for the, uh, the superiority of Islamic finance based on the value proposition, the economic value that the system, which is based on the Sharia principles, is offering compared to the conventional banking. So basically that's ma major, the major uh, differences. So, but Islamic finance, uh, we have it now in about 57 jurisdictions well, I can say even more than that, almost 60 jurisdictions around the world, uh, almost all the continent have Islamic banking. So uh, I think it has to do with the one maturity of the market, the population, the legal impediments, and then above all the uh, implementation of the regulatory uh, standards uh, that are basically issued like for IF by IFSB. So these are some of the things that really bring the difference and that will really give the right results.